amazing audience we are live with joe garcia joe what's up man? what's up man i'm good how are you doing i'm doing wonderful you've made a grand opportunity available for me here i've <laughs> i'm back on the podcast mike oh my gosh yeah. i've missed it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got you back you're like feeling like you're at home now i'm telling you <laughs> San Antonio, the guy I interviewed before I came here, retired colonel, like he was telling me that there are places in San Antonio that he passes where he sees Engel. So, oh. yeah. And then I told him I put, I passed uh, Jones, is it Matzburg or Maltzburg? Oh, yeah, Jones Maltzburg or Engel, Engelsburg or something like that. Yeah, see, yeah. Yeah, so I was, he was like, yeah, you're, born, you're a born Texan. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you doing, my friend? I'm doing wonderful this day, this hot day here in San Antonio. It is hot. It is hot. Oh, yeah, no hot. doubt. Like we do have that fan on in the back, uh, you know, just warm, just cooling us off. But tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? I don't know. I think it's my podcasting talents, yeah. you know? Boom. Tell me about <laughs> your podcast, please. Well, I started something about two years ago called the Two Shots Podcast. I basically started it to talk about sports, news, entertainment here in San Antonio, and it was named after Jonathan Sanford, which is the former announcer for the San Antonio Spurs. Sweet. And a friend of mine, I, I, you know, we, we connect through Facebook and all that. So he's no longer the announcer for the Spurs. Mm. Saddens me, but I'm glad that he's moved on to better things, you know, yeah. for his family. I love your voice, man. Your voice, even in my ears, you know, your voice songs, it's a cool, calm, smooth <laughs> type, yeah, textured voice. I yeah. love it. Who did you learn the skill of understanding sports from? Uh, just something I've always had a passion for, picked up, and just got with the right people. I've been fortunate enough to make good friends here in San Antonio with the likes of Chris Duell, Dylan Emery, Kylan Jackson, even Jeff Garcia of News 4 San Antonio, Sweet. and Michael DeLeon of Project Spurs. So I've had a, a collection of a lot of people who have played a, an instrumental part in helping me grow as a podcaster. That's good. That's good. So where can I find this podcast? Oh, you can find Two Shots Podcast on the World Wide Web at TwoShotsSA.com and also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram yeah. at Two Shots, which is all spelled out, T-W-O-S-H-O-T-S, -S, podcast. And again, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Love it. Amazing audience. You're hearing it live here again uh, from Joe Garcia. Joe, tell me what's one thing you've done consistently over the last three years? Over the last three years is I've never given up. You know, mm. I always felt that I was had a passion for podcasting and and, and just talking about, you know, subjects sometimes that, you know, people don't want to talk about, you know, things that are important to the community, even dealing with a little bit of, you know, politics, you know, now it's a heated well, really, subject. Yeah. But we talk about things, you know, that have to do with racism and equality for everybody. You know, mm. I've talked about it live on the radio with my friend Guylan Jackson, and I feel that there's a voice, you know, that you can use your voice no matter how small you are or mm. how big you are to use it as a platform for good, as my good friend Chris Duell is always saying. Hmm. You have a voice, use it for good. How are you going to change the world by what you can put out into it? Yeah, it's a very powerful medium, isn't it? Yes, uh, sir, it is. Amplifying your voice, radio, and now the podcast, which is the same, yeah? Amplifying your voice is a grand opportunity. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel good, you know? I like to be able not to only speak about subjects that other people might kind of shy away from, but also use the things that I've learned to help empower other people to be successful. You know, one thing that I always say is you cannot be successful if you give up. If you, mm -hmm. if you never give up, if you keep pushing through, even when you want to give up, yeah. success will find you. But you, there's no easy road to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't take shortcuts. And it's always done with hard work. Yeah, you I know? totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree. Definitely our journey out here uh, proves everything you've just said, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, the challenges, but it's about getting up and living in the compartments and, you know, yeah. just uh, going through what the day brings and then you get to the next day and then you go again. It's really been a journey and life is like that. Uh, I was uh, telling my wife earlier on that... Um, my life, I want it to be an inspiration to others that if yeah. Angel could do it, anyone could do it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but just make sure that thing you're doing is core to who you are. Yeah. You know, don't do what Angel is doing because I want to do what Angel is doing. No, <laughs> do what you know is core to you. Yeah. No, what is core to you seems to be the podcast concept and how amplifying your voice. You're definitely a neat guy, right? Uh, I'm telling you, there aren't many people that have their garage space in such a <laughs>
a beautiful uh, setup, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, like kudos to that. Like I've seen many garages, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah and you've done a, a an amazing job here. Um, let's switch gears. Okay. Let me invite you now into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm blue Caribbean water. Oh, that sounds nice. Sorry. It's nice. What is your earliest childhood memory? Earliest childhood memory? I, I have a lot of them. The one that always sticks out with me is I used to live in California when I was a kid. So one of the things I remember remembers vividly when I was about maybe four or five years old is my family had all gotten together to have like kind of like a family get together on the beach. It was a whole day affair. It was something that me and my cousins were swimming in the ocean, you know, all together yeah. off on the beach over in Oceanside, California with my uncle who was a Marine. Yeah. And it carried on to the evening and they just remember them playing the old music. They were playing the Eagles. I remember listening to Hotel California on the, on the record player. Yeah. And I was in this cabana, you know, that they had rented, and I was sleepy, so I laid down. And I remember as I was laying down and I was looking at the ocean, I could just see the waves, and I just felt real peaceful. Hmm. Listening to the music and falling asleep at night, watching the moon and the reflection off of the, the waves coming in. To me, that was just like one of the most peaceful, serene moments that I have in my childhood that That's sticks amazing. out with me. That's amazing. How old were you in that memory? I was probably around maybe going on four to five years old. Why do you think that memory is so clear? I think it's just because of the amount of fun that we had. Family, friends, just doing the things that I love to do. I love the beach. I love swimming. I like being in the ocean. To me, when I'm near the beach, the coast and all that, it, it brings back those memories of being at home, yeah. which Cali was my home when I was a little boy. Cali, so, yeah. yeah, it brings back those good memories, those good vibes. How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? Uh, at times, you know, when I feel like I'm stressed and all that, I, I go back to, and I think this is one thing that everybody needs to do. At times when you feel stressed and the world's caving in around you and you're under the pressure, just take a step back when it's a simpler time, you know, where mm. little things just made you happy as a child, you know? So everybody, to me, I, and they tell me now that like I'm a man child, that I, I'll never grow up, that I have this thing about me where it's very youthful, you know, all yeah. the time. And I'm like, well, who says you have to? You know, you can always be a child at heart, but, you know, in times of stress, fall back on your childhood memories. You know, things aren't really that bad. You know, I make them that. simple. I love that. I love the connection of that, that memory to even what we were talking about right before in terms of the living in decompartments. Yeah. yeah. Like the way you said that, you know, like you never give up. You keep going. Yep. And just like the day and the night are so consistent, it's the same. Yeah. Like yeah. You, were, you were just visualizing for me in my metaphoric way thinking manner just the consistency of that is yeah. peaceful peace yeah it's yeah. peaceful if we fast forward to when you were 12 what was your favorite song wow when i was 12 years old i can't even remember man really? you know you know to tell you the truth a lot of the things i was doing at 12 and 13 14 years old i was into sports i was outside i was busy playing sports yeah. i was one of these kids that would go out in the summertime and leave like at eight in the morning I wouldn't come back till nine at night, 10 o'clock wow. at night, because I was out on the streets, you know, on my bike and I was playing football, basketball, soccer, yeah. you name it. I was out there doing that. And That's to cool. me, I, I didn't really have time to listen to the music because I was so busy hanging out with my friends. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form it says yes or no, possibly a bit more. We are going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes, I actually have. I'm actually working on passing on my skills to uh, a small group of podcasters that I've taken under my wing, and I hope to pass on the knowledge that I've gained to them. And it's going to be amazing to me to see them come up and be successful. That's to me, wonderful. it's good to share the knowledge. That's you wonderful. should never hoard knowledge. It's always meant for everyone. Sharing is caring. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So are you married? Yes, sir, I am. And do you have children? I have three kids. Oh, my. <laughs> boys or girls? I got two boys and a girl. All right. Congratulations. Thank uh, you, sir. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Uh, no, I don't really watch TV. I listen to a lot of radio, and I like to get out in this good city of San Antonio and meet a lot of amazing people. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Uh, actually, I live on the screen because you have, I have many to. screens. <laughs> I have to report, you know, on the on the you know about the sports and about news and about all of this stuff going on in the media. So I'd say I spend maybe about four or five hours a day all right. on various screens, either my cell phone or looking at a, a cell phone. You I have mean, five screens computer in screen. here, Joe. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have five screens. I got a, quite a bit. I got quite a bit. <laughs> I got a couple. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I, I left out the question. Do you believe in God? Oh, I believe in God, but I also respect other people's views. And everyone doesn't have to believe in a thing that they call God. But as long as you believe in a higher power that gives you this spiritual presence, this calming effect, and shows you who we are in this grand, vast universe, it doesn't matter what you call hmm. the person who you serve. Now, I formed a workbook. The name of it is called Your Own Unique Real Self, right? But connected to that is like a ton of things. One specific thing is your own unique real statement. Okay. And that represents a statement that represents, again, I'm saying represents, and I'll say it one more time just to make it clear. A statement that represents who Joe Garcia is. What would you say that? Oh, it's the way I end my podcast all the time. Spread the love, stop the hate, and be kind. Love it. This was a great pleasure, my friend. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I believe that everybody that's put on this world can change the world for, be for a better, uh, make it a better place, Just make it a better inhabitable place for us to, you know, share our lives together. So no matter what you think you can or cannot do, you have an impact and you have a voice. So go out there and change the world, make it better for everybody. Love it, Joe Garcia. This was a great pleasure. Thank Thanks you. for creating this opportunity <laughs> yeah, for me. It is just, you know, podcast again the way I miss. I miss it, I miss it, I miss it. But I mean, thank you for uh, making this possible. Thank you for being on what is inspired by my convos with Angel Jones. Pleasure, my friend. Boom. Did you have fun? I always have fun. Love it. All right, we're done. <laughs>